Welcome to Ripple Effect, a podcast from Formstack, revealing how simple decisions can have a lasting effect on others. I'm your host, Chris Byers. Today, I want to introduce you to someone who is driven to make a difference by empowering a new generation of difference makers. Sound confusing? I'll explain. His name is Ko Salmon, and he is the Productivity Solutions Product Manager at Azusa Pacific University. I love that title, and we will dive into exactly what that means. As fate would have it, the mission of Azusa Pacific aligned perfectly with Ko's passion. One of our models or our goals is we produce difference makers, and it's our job even as IT to help um, produce those difference makers whichever way we can. The team code joined at Azusa Pacific was originally Document Solutions, which received its namesake due to the need to simplify the overwhelming documentation processes that come with any university. But in the spirit of being a difference maker, Co and his team found they could do far more than provide document solutions. They could inspire and enable productivity for everyone involved. But as time went on, our leadership found the need for us to expand to just scanning documents, but also be going out there, speaking with customers. And, and when I say customers, I'm, re- re- I'm referring to um, staff, faculty, and some of the students as well. So meeting with them, speaking with them, consulting with them, trying to find what problems that they have, and then bringing that back and finding solutions for them and having these lightweight tools that we could use and we could introduce to them. So how exactly does someone pull this off? How do you gain the buy-in that has everyone down the line adopting the process? Let's listen in and find out. So the Office of the Provost deals with a lot of faculty contracts and payment and all of that. So there's a lot of sensitive information in there, um, especially when it, it comes to payment of faculty. So a faculty member will take X number of um, units per semester that they're going to be paid for. But in addition to that, they might want to teach extra classes or they might be required to teach extra classes. So with that, there has to be a process, obviously. So we have to collect the information, what course you're going to be teaching, how long you're going to be teaching that, all that information, and then how much you're going to get paid. So imagine the process of having the admin initially fill it out and then sending it through intercampus mail. It could get lost in intercampus mail. It could take days, it could take weeks, it could take months, and it was just a problem that was, that was um, that had to be solved. When you've been able to have a hand in uh, crafting a process like this that really makes a big difference in the way people operate, how does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel great. It makes me feel even better when I see the smile on the faculty members' faces when they're getting paid on time. So um, it always puts a smile on my face when I see them happy and in control of that form and that process. Yeah, that type of uh, type of change is, is, is sounds like just a really good success. The one thing I've noticed is sometimes we decide to make a workflow process change, a you know a change to a system, and people can sometimes be a little bit slow to adopt, or they don't want to, or, or they just want to kind of keep doing what they're doing. You might call that entropy or inertia or something. How have you worked or your team worked to kind of overcome that and help people understand the value they could get out of a change in a process? As we started to roll out forms that are on campus, uh, naturally there were some resistance to change. There's always that resistance to change when it comes to a new solution like this, especially when it comes to IT. But um, we've had experience with rolling out a lot of IT solutions to our faculty, staff, and students. So we are always prepared. What we found that it's very helpful to include the stakeholders because usually the stakeholders are the ones who are the most resistant to the change. Um, well, we've been doing it. We've always been doing this it this way. It's not broken. Why should we fix it? So we always include the stakeholders in the um, the initial phases, at the planning phases. We walk them through the process. Okay, this is what's going to change. This is how it's going to change. And most importantly. This is how it's going to be better. It used to take 30 days to process this. Now it's going to take two days to process this. And ultimately, this is better for the students because here at a university, the end customer is the students. We're here to serve the students. So if the students are happy and 
the work is being processed in a timely fashion and they're not complaining, then it's a win-win for everyone. So initially, some of these processes, it took a, there was a bit of a learning curve and it took a lot of time for the people building the forms and the departments actually doing the work, but they understood that it would be better for the students. Even though it's taken a long time for them to create the forms and do all the work, in the end, um, the students are going to benefit from the solution. So it's just always good to highlight um, the fact that it's going to make um, our students happier in, in the long term. Yeah. And you, you've mentioned this idea of teaching users to use the software. Where does that come about? That, that sounds like, a, again, a very productive way to go about things that allows you to select the right tools and then hand them over and not have to do the job every time. But yeah, how do you think about that? Yeah, because IT is limited in terms of resources. Um, that's natural. We can't do everything. We can't support everything. But we don't have enough hands to to support every and, and all tools. So when I got this um, project from my um, my leadership, they were like, you know, find a form building tool. There's definitely a need for this. Co, cool. find a form building tool. But we do not want this to be a large, clunky tool enterprise level that is going to require someone who knows CSS or who, who's a developer who's going to actually build out the workflow and build out all these forms. What we want to do is we want to give it out to our customers and have them own the form so that um, we don't have to do it. And if we don't have to do it, that's less work. And it also removes bottlenecks. A lot of the times, IT is forced to be the bottleneck because X number of users have created a form and then now they want just one field or one wording changed in the form. They have to call IT. IT is working on other stuff like, oh, we can't get that to you until tomorrow, until next week. And then IT becomes that bottleneck. Now at Formstack and with Formstack being that self-service tool and us providing it to our customers, if they want to make that change, they could just go in, make that change and the form is live and it's up and running without any intervention from IT. You tell that story about IT being limited in resources. I think there's something about your job title, that idea of productivity solutions in an organization. And I go back to that idea that your university has chosen a pretty forward-thinking and advanced way of thinking about that. I, I don't hear that job title very often. What would your advice be to the corporation who is listening to this conversation about the need for someone thinking about productivity solutions in an organization and the value it can bring? So our organization has taken product approach. So I'm moving away from project management approach to more product focused. So that's why my job title is product manager of productivity solutions. So we've got other product managers as well that are leading teams with uh, with other products. So that product approach really helps because it's not just a project where, okay, we implement form stack from A to Z. There's a defined, a predefined timeline. After that timeline is done, we wash our hands and move on to the next project. We see product management as an essential part um, in terms of IT. Form stack is my product. I treat it like a, as a human being, as a baby, it needs different needs. It, it grows up. It's an infant. It needs different needs. Um, it graduates college. It needs different needs. So Formstack, I take it through the whole life cycle. Um, right now, I know to the maturity phase in terms of our organization. So the, the needs that it has uh, are different. And the way that we're going to provide it and promote it to our customers is different. So anyone listening to this, I would say that having that product management approach to any product even if it's product, a productivity solutions product or enterprise product, having that product management approach um, is always helpful. You know, what, what you're talking about, that idea of product management is, is really interesting. The, uh, I just shared a quote with our team today in an email. Uh, it was from Steve Blank, who's fairly well known in the product world. And he, and he said something like, there are no facts inside your building. You know, so the, the way that applies here, of course, is... If you just live in IT and make all your decisions in IT and somebody says, here, I need a CRM, I need a form provider, you then go out and do RFPs, et cetera, et cetera, and you end up with a product, you, you technically solve the problem. But I think you're spot on in, in that thinking that 
as a really good product manager, you've got to understand your customer. You've got to understand actually the problem they're trying to solve, not the outcome that they're suggesting. Because sometimes, as you know, the outcome they're suggesting isn't quite the answer. Do you have any examples of where someone did come along and say, I, I, I think I know the answer to my problem, and you actually use that product management approach to say, to discover a little bit more and find some problems that they didn't quite realize were there and, and solve it in a different way? Yes. I was a department that came to me and they were like, you know, we're paying for this tool right now. And I'm not going to mention the tool, but like it's a little outdated. And most of all, it's expensive. This tool takes payment. It's, it's meant to take payment. So we're using this around campus to collect payment for events and all that stuff. Cole, can you find another tool here? Here's a list of tools that we've already vetted and we know will work. And this is an industry standard, blah, blah, blah. Please um, help us in implementing these tools. So I look at a list of tools. I take that back to our team. Our team is like, why do we even need this? The customer's recommending this, but we have a better suggestion. We could use Formstack for this. Formstack has got an integration um, with other payment processes. We could easily integrate this with Formstack. We already have Formstack up and running. Um, this is something we could definitely use. Um, we took this back to the customer. They were like, we don't know if Formstack meets all our needs, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is a classic example of the customer saying, I need to go from point A to point B, and I need a Rolls Royce. Are you sure you need a Rolls Royce? We could find you something better. So in this case, the team decided Formstack would be the best tool we sat with the stakeholders, we showed them how Formstack would easily collect payments and how we could integrate this with our business office so that each payment is tied to a specific department account. Once they saw that, they were sold, especially since they wouldn't, the department would not have to bear any additional cost by another tool since we we're already paying for Formstack. And they would also not have to pay the processing fee because the business office would pay the processing fee for authorized.net. And um, at the end of the day, it was a win-win. Everyone was happy. And now everyone's using authorized.net to collect payment. And to date, authorized.net is probably the most um, utilized integration for Formstack here on campus. Co, how do you define productivity and, and how that plays out in your organization and how it plays out in your team? For me personally, productivity is being able to achieve my task, but not just being effective, but being efficient. So I've got a car that takes me from point A to point B. That's fine. But does it take me from point A to point B in an efficient way with less gas and all of that? That's what I take into consideration when I talk about productivity. So we've got our customers and our faculty and our students that have been using paper processes for many years. It does the job. It works for them. It helps them. It does everything it has to do, but how can we get that information from point A to point Z in a limited uh, amount of time, a short amount of time, and with minimal effort? So that's what my definition of productivity. I'm improving processes and making them more efficient. Ko, you, you mentioned this idea of difference makers, and I know for me uh, in our organization, I'm always thinking about, yep, we're here to make a great product and grow revenue and, and be profitable. But if we're not doing that on purpose, uh, we're probably missing something. How do you and, and the university think about and define difference makers? Well, I don't know if this is a university definition, but this is a co-definition. My definition, I'll put it this way. Um, the way we teach our students and the way we give them the knowledge, we want it to be in such a way that as they go out into the workforce, they can make a difference in whatever they're doing, whether they're a teacher or the lawyer, whatever they're doing. We want a situation whereby the ex-student is working at wherever they're working and they just stop them, their the leadership or the uh, other coworkers stop them and say, how do you do this so effortlessly? What school did you go to? The way you're making a difference here in our organization, um, you are really impacting our organization uh, in a positive way. Which university did you go to? This is the result we're talking about when we talk about difference makers. 
On a micro level, can you think of one thing you could do today that would empower someone to solve a repetitive problem or request that your team receives? I know for us at Formstack, oftentimes we'll share ideas on how to become more productive or how to eliminate distraction or noise in our organization. I know even recently our team shared ideas on how to make email more productive. The question is simply, can you think of a way to take a next step today that helps solve one of those repetitive problems that's eating up people's time and reducing their productivity? Ko's passion aligns perfectly with the mission of Azusa Pacific, enabling him to be the difference maker he is while empowering those around him. How can we better align the passions of people in our organizations to our mission? Well, thank you for joining us this week on Ripple Effect. To dive further into how Co has transformed work at Azusa Pacific, head over to formstack.com forward slash APU.